What is Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is the world's first engineered monetary system. And what happened is a set of engineers, nameless engineers, recoiled in horror after the great financial crisis with all the bank bailouts. And they looked and they said, this just isn't fair. It isn't right. We want to create a better money. And they used two technologies. They used the Internet, the idea that I could, internet, I could network hundreds of thousands or millions of computers. And they used cryptography, the idea that I could cryptographically sign something so that it could not be tampered with with anyone, friend or foe. And using those two technologies, they conceptualized the idea of an immutable ledger, if you will, a bank in cyberspace. What if 100 people got together, 100 people with money got together and they said, we're going to create a bank in cyberspace. And um, we want to put our money there. And we don't trust each other. We don't trust the government. We don't trust any corporation. We don't even trust any one computer. So we create a program that keeps track of a ledger, 21 million coins or shares in the bank, divisible by 100 million, called this down to a Satoshi. So 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis. You don't have to know that all you need to know is there's 21 million coin units. You can't make any more. And they wanted to create it, uh, create it so that they could um, they could send their money to each other, to anybody in the network. They could store it for 1,000 years, 10,000 years, a million years, forever. And they don't have to trust anybody. So they created this idea of, of um, Bitcoin. It's an asset that's protected by cryptography. And it's stored on a ledger. Um, software, the software administers the ledger. The twist is we distributed the software on thousands and thousands of separate computers. Every, com every Bitcoin node is running a copy of the ledger. So everybody in the world that, that has their money in the bank has a copy of all of uh, the money in the bank and all the transactions since the beginning of time. So it's the immutable truth. Every 10 minutes, the system takes a batch as a set of, contra uh, of transactions and then redistributes the money based upon, upon the instructions of the owners. If I want to send you my Bitcoin, I send it and it goes to you. And every single computer in the network updates that. And they all check it cryptographically using, using uh, modern encryption. Now, how do we defend the network? There, there's, there's really three nodes of interest that make this uh, compelling. The first node is that Bitcoin node that keeps track of that ledger. It's the most secure uh, database in the world, and it's a database of immutable truth. It's, a, it's the ledger of money. The second node is a miner. It's, um, it's um, uh, 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 SHA-256, or it's an encrypting miner that's generating hash functions to protect the network, and there are millions of them. And they're all competing with each other to build the next block. There's only one out of two million involved in this network. It's like every, every miner gives you a lottery ticket, and one of the two million will get to build an Xbox and will get paid a lot of money, like $300,000. And you don't know which one. So the miners are a wall of encrypted energy. They're converting electricity into hashes. And then inside that wall of electricity or wall of energy, is the Bitcoin ledger, which is distributed in a decentralized fashion. And there's one other interesting node called a lightning node. This is a layer two decentralized system. This is decentralized payments. It'll move small amounts of Bitcoin at the speed of light programmatically almost for free. OK, so Bitcoin is a decentralized. It's a decentralized piece of software. The brilliance of it is it's a bank in cyberspace that nobody controls, nobody can corrupt. It's, it, it's a bank run by incorruptible software offering a global, affordable, simple, secure savings account for everybody on earth that has neither the means nor the inclination to run their own hedge fund. Right? You have some money. You have life savings. You simply don't want to lose it. You want to put it in a bank. 
So Bitcoin is that bank in cyberspace. These but engineers came up with this idea. Who are the engineers? Well, we don't know. We know some of them. They're the cypherpunks. They were, they were into cryptography. Uh, the most important of them was Satoshi, who we don't know who it was. Satoshi wrote the white paper, created the first version of Bitcoin, gave it to the rest. And initially, there wasn't any money in the network. They just ran it for a year as a hobby, right? Um, and then over time, there was a famous, ex famous transaction where somebody bought uh, a pizza, right, for like 10,000 Bitcoin, <laughs> one pizza. And, uh, and that was the first transaction. And then the network gradually began to monetize as people bought into the network. And so it was, it's like a fire in cyberspace. Should we be nervous that we don't know the identity of the founder? No, I don't think we should be nervous. We should be joyful because for Bitcoin to work, it needs to be money of the people. It needs to be not controlled by any individual. It needs to be not under the thumb of a founder or a corporation or one strong holder. The most important thing Satoshi did was he created this gift. He gave it to the world. I assume a he. Some people think she. Some people think it's multiple people. But Satoshi gave this gift to the world and disappeared. And, uh, and Satoshi mined about a million coins getting it started, but they never, those coins never moved. Never. They've never been moved. Satoshi's never appeared again. And then the network was, was in essence, a community development all around the world for the next decade. And it's simply grown from a million dollars in the bank to 10 million, to 100 million, to a billion, to 10 billion, to 100 billion. In March of uh, our second quarter of 2020, it was about $180 billion in this network. And that's where I got involved. I was late. But when I got involved, what I saw was uh, I saw a, a, an engineered monetary asset, a digital gold, if you will, sitting on an open big tech monetary network. And I said, this is an economic imperative.